At the Laboratory of Chemical Technology, we do research to improve chemical processes. Uh, we start from, for example, CO2 utilization, extract CO2 from the environment and, and use it for, for other resources. Uh, we look at the more efficient ways to use plastics, and we do that by increasing the efficiency of the chemical reactors. So to design chemical reactors, there's a wide range of parameters that you have to take, take into account. You can play with lengths, with diameters, with materials, with pretreatments, with coatings. So there's, there's a lot of things to test. And we do that in an environment such as this, which is a, an experimental facility. Now, experiments are only one way of, of testing all these parameters. Uh, the alternatives are simulations. Uh, we can run those simulations on our own computers, but that would take a very, very long time. So in order to test more scenarios or to have more detail of a certain simulation, we make use of the supercomputer. Behind me, you can see one of uh, our supercomputers. This is also sometimes referred to as high performance computing or HPC. And the supercomputer is basically built up of several individual computers that are able to work together using a high speed network. For instance, the computer you can see behind me has about 17,000 cores, uh, roughly 73 terabytes of memory, and uh, more than four petabytes of storage available. Scientific computing or supercomputing has the advantage that you can speed up all the calculations that you want to do tremendously. If you would calculate for one day on the entire supercomputer here, it would take you 23 years on a single laptop. The heat flux profile, mm -hmm. and then, yeah. The uh, things around them. Yeah. The chemical industry in Belgium is one of the most important industries in this country. And if you look at, at the increasing competitiveness of countries like China or the US, the European chemical industry can only be competitive if they bring innovation. And that's basically what the HPC does. During the past five years, we have invested massively on high performance computing. This has allowed us to basically to develop novel technologies, patent new technologies, and even demonstrate them at full scale. So of course we use it extensively for chemical engineering to optimize our chemical reactors, but there's a wide range of other applications that supercomputing is used for. From the top of my head, I can think of colleagues that are working on molecular simulations, so on optimizing molecules. Uh, I can think of colleagues that are optimizing wind farms. Supercomputers are used in all aspects of your life, in science and in research and development. You see it in your daily life in, in the car you drive has been designed by a supercomputer. Uh, the iPhone you, you have in your pocket, uh, but also uh, the weather predictions that you see on the television are made using supercomputers. The most crazy application that I can think of is, uh, is one in the linguistics department where they analyze hundreds of thousands of lines of text. So they basically detect patterns in spoken and written language to have a fundamental uh, insight in how people understand and communicate uh, to each other. Our supercomputer is used by students and researchers from, from universities, but also by people from industry who use it to improve their products and to speed up their time to market. So without the supercomputers, we would be very limited in the things that we can do. There is always the option of doing more experiments, but that would just mean that new developments would take years uh, instead of months. So what we see is that uh, the HPC has given us uh, an incredible computational power. And what we have seen is that uh, for the field of chemical engineering, this has really been a breakthrough. And that's why I think that uh, all companies, but also universities, should basically embrace the HPC and take your science to a new level. <laughs>